Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the word platform, um, I mean, I think it's fair to say it's overused. (laughs) Um, It's a good aspiration. You know, I mean, you look at platforms like iOS and like, you know, yeah, we, that would, that's a great aspiration for any company to build something that massive. Um, What I think, you know, and so I've worked on a lot of things that have either been called platforms or API products or data products or, um, and, um, and ultimately, I mean, I, I think there are a few elements that make something a platform. Um, I think a prerequisite to build a platform is that you need to be running a surplus of something. Um, you could be running a surplus of engagement. <laughs> you could be running a surplus of revenue growth. Um, you could be running a surplus of market share. Um, but um, I think, um, you know, you need to be in a position where you believe that you have so much um, loyalty um, and like sort of uh, NPS and other positive metrics among your consumers that they both want to trust you um, to actually, uh, you know, to be a um, sort of a proxy between them and some of the other applications they're going to use and that they actually over time see um, uh, see a, a virtuous cycle around value in your product by making use of the platform. So, um, so to make that to take that out of the theoretical, you know, with Slack, I would oftentimes draw this triangle on the board for my team, which was like, you know, the software we use at work, and at the very very bottom are operating systems. Like we open our phones or we open our laptops. And the operating system is there and nothing else works without it. So they are operating from the very, very widest space. And then you maybe go to the very tipping point and you're like, you think of software that maybe one or two people in the entire organization use. And I would assert that there is a much smaller and much less meaningful opportunity to create a platform for something that um, fulfills such a narrow um, usage. And maybe is the type of software maybe you use once a quarter or once a year or once a week as opposed to those things that sit at the bottom of the stack that maybe get hours of usage per day. And so the reason that Slack had the opportunity to create a legitimate platform that consumers were, you know, that users actually like wanted to turn to, and also where users saw more value the more they used the platform features was because communication, I would assert, is like the last thing before the operating system itself, which is why when you buy a device, it comes with communication tools baked in already. Um, because a device in the, you know, in this day and age is not really useful if, without communication tools. So, um, but, you know, what I've seen is I've seen a lot of companies that, um, that want to go after a platform play because they figured out a business and they're reaching the end of that TAM. And they're like, well, what we're going to do is we're going to layer on we're going to layer on a platform, but I think that um, it's important to inspect whether you sort of meet those prerequisites. Like, are you running a surplus of either engagement or customer love or, um, you know, or, uh, you know, revenue opportunity? Uh, And, and do you actually, can you offer some sort of a substrate that allows those platform apps to actually create incremental value for your customers? That's only going to make your platform stickier and stickier and stickier, which we had with which we had with Slack. Um, Twitter would be a counter example to that, and I'm happy to talk about it, but I'll pause there. <laughs>